Good evening, friends. I'm Steve Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. And uh, last night, there was a, another police shooting that led to the death of a 27-year-old man at the Wendy's in Atlanta, Georgia. But, of course, before video came out about uh, this particular shooting, uh, people were already taking to Twitter, social media, and expressing their outrage. And even, uh, you know, violence has ensued, riots have ensued, they have even burnt down the Wendy's itself. Uh, videos like this one right here, let me just play this clip for you. This is a man that, uh, you know, claims to have seen the entire thing. And granted, there are two sides to every story. So I think, you know, especially with all the tensions going on today, we need to really wait and examine these issues before they actually explode. And, uh, and of course, and recognize too, we are dealing with a new world order agenda. They want you to riot. They want the looting. They want the unrest. They want to bring about the end of uh, our police forces here because why many of your police, uh, like for example, many of the sheriffs around the nations, they're part of the Patriot movement. Uh, they're part of those that would be there in case the government kind of went haywire and tried to create a new world order type of thing. So there's a lot going on that people are not thinking about. Now, again, getting back to the Wendy shooting, listen to this rant right here, but then we're going to look at what the ABC News mainstream media that was willing to actually be a little bit more unbiased about the, the, the shooting and show you both sides. Listen to this, though. Watch these fucking pigs talk to this dude for 20 minutes. Uh, by the way, I do apologize. should have warned you in, in advance. The language is very, very um, colorful, you might say. Uh, but we still need to play it because this is what helped to incite all the violence. Listen in. And these fucking assholes shoot them in the Wendy's drive through for no fucking reason. For no fucking reason. Shot him. I saw y'all talking to him for 20 minutes, dude. Unarmed, nonviolent, nothing wrong with how he conducted himself whatsoever. And you pull a fucking gun, dude? Wow. Wow. All right. Now, he's saying the guy is nonviolent, didn't do anything wrong, and they just up and shot him. This is the type of of videos that get out on the internet that really cause a lot of problems and of course as we can see just from his from videos like that now Wendy's is being burnt to the ground as a result like if Wendy's had anything to do with it all right well let's take a look at what really did happen and of course I have to say I can't justify the policeman's actions in this for lethal force, but still, it's not the way that is being made out to be by the man that posted his Twitter video that the man did absolutely nothing. Listen to ABC News as they cover the story uh, in a more candid way. For joining us on this Saturday, I'm Tom Yamas. We're going to start with some breaking news just in from Atlanta. The police chief just stepping down in the wake of a deadly officer-involved shooting. Investigators looking closely at this video right here, an attempted arrest in a Wendy's parking lot, turning to a struggle over a stun gun. The suspect then running, turning back towards the officers. Investigators say he pointed that stun gun at them, then one of the officers opened fire. The mayor said she believes it was an unnecessary use of deadly force. ABC's Janae Norman leads us off. All right, now, that's the information that's very important because if you recall... The man in this video right here that made this video here claims that it was unprovoked. Listen again. And these drive through for no fucking reason. For no fucking reason. Shot him. I saw y'all talking to him for 20 minutes, dude. Unarmed. Nonviolent. Nothing wrong with how he conducted himself. What? Okay. This man's claiming that he was unarmed. Nonviolent. Okay, all, all the above, but the mere fact is that's not the case. Now, what led to the scuffle here when police are trying to actually subdue this man? Of course, we don't know. 
right? And the officer, because he is resisting arrest, has pulled his taser out to try to weaken the guy so that he can get they can get this guy arrested. Uh, from what we understand, according to the report by ABC, this man, the the actually the Wendy's store had called police because the guy had they they claim fell asleep in his car. He's sitting in a drive through and they can't get people in you know can't service their customers, so they call the police to have the guy arrested. Well, he's actually struggling. Uh, so if he was asleep in the drive through he's definitely awake now, and the officers are unable to c contain him. So. They said the other guy said he was nonviolent. Well, he seems to be resisting pretty doggone good there. And not only that, manages to break free, run with the taser gun in his hand. So he is armed. All right. And he does point back. It's obvious he's pointing it back. Maybe he's going to try to shoot the officer with the taser gun as well. And, of course, the other officer opens fire or either that officer opens fire. I don't know which one actually opened fire on him. But nonetheless, and the guy was shot down. And from what I understand, he has passed away, uh, at least as from what we understand thus far. I don't know for sure. Uh, of course, they say on here, fatal police shooting. So that uh, undoubtedly the evidence is there that it was fatal. So now, granted, the mayor says it was unjustified use of force. I would probably say the same, unjustified. But in the mo moment of what's going on, the guy is resisting. He is now armed, even though it's a taser. A taser is not considered to be lethal force, but he is armed. And, uh, and he does point it back. And, of course, they make the decision to shoot at that moment of passion there. So, but the thing is, as you get these type videos here coming out, uh, and the guy freaking out, you know, cussing and everything, saying that the guy was unarmed, non-combatant, etc. And it turns into this mess here. And granted, we don't know what actually caused the confrontation. Why did it get like that? Uh, there was also in the ABC report that they did do a breathalyzer. The guy, uh, from what I understood, failed the breathalyzer uh, test. Uh, so this is how we ended up with the situation that we have. So it's not as cut and dry as people make it out to be. And, you know, granted, listen, I understand the feelings of America after we've seen what happened to George Floyd, although there is a lot of uh, very suspicious evidence around all that. But nonetheless, I understand that people's desire to want to protest, etc. But we have warned you guys for years this was coming. We have been telling you for years they're trying to bring about racial tensions, a civil war in this nation. They want a war between the races. Of course, they didn't anticipate, I don't think, that there would be as many white people protesting over the death of George Floyd as they, they did. So it doesn't quite serve the purposes of yet. So now they're going to hype up some more uh, videos. They're going to hype up some more uh, incidents to be able to try to get that, to really make it look more like a white supremacist against the black people type of scenario. It's not, friends. What it is, it is a new world order agenda. They have to dismantle the police. They have to dismantle the military. We have to do away with uh, nationalism as part of this new world order agenda. Coronavirus, everything, all of this is part of that agenda. And this is what's coming. I told you all the way back in 2014, I was telling you about secret meeting with, with Obama, the Secret Service agent, how they were using skull to brain technology to create these killings and deaths in order to be able to get uh, the, the response from the public. But even then, they said they couldn't get the people to, to riot. Well, now they're doing a pretty good job. And, of course, if the people are peacefully protesting, don't worry. they got their agitators and Tifa. They've got, uh, you know, the leaders of George Soros, Black Lives Matter. They can jump in there and raise up the ante for them uh, and bring about the violence. And that's exactly what we see going on across the nation. But then again, of course, what else do we get that goes along with all this? We also get the, uh, the wonderful looting that happens as well. This is a Walmart store in Florida, right? People just... Made it into the store. They don't know actually how they did it. Maybe, well, Walmart's open 24 hours a day anyway. But, you know, all the protesters come in and they just loot the entire store. $100,000 in merchandise goes walking out. All right. <laughs> you know, where does this stuff end? Where does it end? And, of course, now they're pushing, like the New York Post, they're trying to push the white supremacist side of it. You know, they're doing everything they can 
to incite that type of violence. This is exactly where they want this to go. Uh, and then we have the situation up in Seattle, Washington. And this is another situation that is definitely not looking good. Uh, this is the protesters have taken over a portion of the city and they call it a no police zone and they have totally blocked the people out. Listen to RT's report on this subject here. Newly formed autonomous zone in Seattle are considering their next move, having seized control of the area after it was abandoned by police. President Trump has threatened, though, to send in the army if the local authorities fail to resolve the matter. We're not going to let this happen in Seattle. If we have to go in, we're going to go in. The governor's either going to do it, let the governor do it. He's got great National Guard troops. He'll, he can do it. But one way or the other, it's going to get done. These people are not going to occupy a major portion of a great city. Our president wants to tell a story about domestic terrorists who have a radical agenda and are promoting a conspiracy and fits his law and order initiatives. It's simply not true. The threat to invade Seattle, to divide and incite violence in our city, is not only unwelcome, it would be illegal. Well, the capital. <laughs> so the mayor of Seattle calls Trump's thoughts an invasion. You know, I spoke to a former chief deputy today on the phone about the, the crisis, the situation that's going on around the nation uh, with so many turning. It's really become an anti-police uh, initiative. And the former chief deputy said to me, Steve, you know as well as I do, there's always good and bad apples on, on, on both sides. And, and in every field there is. Law enforcement is no different. He said there are issues that go on. And he also mentioned to me that in the case of the George Floyd death, one of the first things that was a red flag in his opinion was that the officer that was accused of the murder of Mr. Floyd by having his uh, knee and his neck there was had been on nine different disciplinary uh, issues already in his recent past. He said any officer, he said, that would have worked under me, that would have had any type of disciplinary issues like this would not be working on the force. And he said, in fact, he said that should go all the way to the top for them to even to allow him to continue working. And he said the sad part is, though, the two officers that were working underneath him were were that were there also helping to hold George Floyd down were brand new officers. He said, they're just taking orders. They don't really know what to do. They're new on the job. And he said, for them, it's really uh, a really bad deal that this has happened uh, in this case here. And of course, he did, he did say to me, though, he said in his city where he was at, I won't mention that city, but he said where he's at right now, there are a lot of protests going on. Thus far, it has been peaceful. And he said, I do support the people's right to, to be able to peacefully protest. He said, but that's the way it needs to be. I, he did weigh in on the Seattle, Washington issue as well. And his comment was that, uh, and he's a very strong supporter of President Trump, but he said that if he were President Trump, he would not send the military in. He said that is, he said they're waiting for the president to do something like this. He said that will only make the matters worse. He said, what I would do is cut funding to the to Washington, the state of Washington until they bring their own house in order. He said, it's their responsibility to clean up the mess. And no, they shouldn't allow it just to become an autonomous zone the way it's been done. So anyway, I thought that was some very interesting uh, thoughts there. Listen, I want to turn our attention to another issue here. And this is uh, dealing with the vaccines that are being spoken about, uh, mandatory vaccines that have been spoken about for quite some time over the coronavirus. And this has become a major issue for many people. And there's a lot of fears that people have, uh, especially in light of the fact that so many times it's been spoken about that this will be a mandatory virus. It'll be a virus that if you do not uh, take the vaccine, that you know, you won't be allowed to work. You will not be allowed to participate in the economy. Uh, you basically, you'd be ostracized. You'd be, you'd be shunned like to some little uh, colony somewhere. But, but at any rate, as, as we look at this, I, I was uh, spoke, uh, contacted recently about 
very well-known um, uh, Intel people as well as ministers that are basically saying, and I went and listened for myself, and I won't speak about any names here, but went and listened to see for myself if this was, if the case was accurate, it was, that taking the vaccine, that some people will have to take the vaccine because of the type of jobs they have. Uh, they might be healthcare providers, etc. But don't worry because Jesus will take care of you. All right. For first off, I would have had to have stated, started off with, you know, Jesus should be able to heal you when it comes to the virus. Forget the vaccine. And no vaccine is good to take. Plain and simple. Uh, Robert F. Kennedy Jr., who has been a, a very much of an outspoken uh, advocate, you know, or a very vocal advocate, I should say, against the vaccine community, especially Bill Gates uh, and what he's done uh, to this industry, uh, has really weighed in on some of these things here because Bill Gates is is really promoting this vaccine and uh, and and. I have this article right here from Natural Blaze, going to share some insights with you on that. But I am just, before I do that, I'm just extremely concerned that ministers and people that are in the intel community would downplay the severity and the seriousness of a coronavirus vaccine. Because one, they have it on warp speed. The president himself has a, uh, a czar basically over his warp speed vaccination program. In fact, I was actually told by one minister, uh, don't worry, we know Bill Gates is not a good guy and he, he's, he's got some very damaging vaccines. We know that. But Trump has taken, it, taken over this and it's not going to be Bill Gates. Uh, and he said he's appointed a new czar in there to take take control of the vaccine, make sure it's going to be brought, the, a good one to be, a, a good and safe one to be brought to the public. Well, Donald Trump chose the man that's working, that, or excuse me, that has a, a, a nearly $10 million worth of stock in Moderna to be the head of his vaccine program. And when they say that Bill Gates is not involved, well, Moderna just so happens to have Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation connected at the hip. And it says on their own website that Bill Gates and Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation is the top secret component of their company. Not even to be revealed to the public what they do in there. And when they're telling you that this vaccine is going to become mandatory. Trump's own former attorney says that based on the Constitution, they have a right to force you to take this vaccine. And in order to bring society back to normal, in other words, in order for you to be able to work in your job, pay for your bills, buy your food, feed your family, pay your rent. In other words, everything that the Bible says about buy and sell, if you don't buy and sell, except that you take the mark. And I don't say the vaccine is, a, is the mark itself, but friends, it seems too eerily similar to what biblical prophecy speaks about. All right. So let's, without going into more, any more of that debate, let's take a quick look at some of the things written in this article uh, where Robert Kennedy and Robert, Robert and uh, Dr. Sherry Timpany and Dr. Uh, Mikovich, they work very close together, advocates against vaccines and especially this vaccine. Uh, and of course, those of you that know Sherry Timpany from the many interviews that Jan has done with her uh, as well. And if you haven't seen them, please go back, look those up. Very insightful information about the dangers of vaccines. Anyway, the article says here by Alex uh, Petrosky, in recent weeks as a pandemic crisis deepens, Bill Gates has been taking interviews, casually telling the world that the only solution to the current situation is a new vaccination for everyone. He recently told CBS that mass gatherings will be considered optional until a vaccine is rolled out. You know, it's so important to get not just hundreds of millions, but literally billions of those vaccines, because this is a global problem, Bill Gates states. He goes on to state, this is a big economic shock, and some things we really want 
to be broadly vac excuse me want to be broadly vaccinated before we're not worried about this and it's changing our behavior in a significant way. He even states in which activities like mass gatherings uh, may be in certain sense more optional and so until you're widely vaccinated, those may not uh, come back uh, at all. That's Bill Gates speaking. The implication is this. When a new vaccine is invented, then mass produced, it will not necessarily be mandatory, but everything else in your life, such as work, school, community, and sociality, will all become privileges granted by the state under the condition that you take the new vaccine. That's what I'm talking about, friends. That's what I say. You can't buy or sell. You can't be a part of society unless you have this vaccine. Not to mention as we've heard from Celeste, John interviewed Celeste in, in her broadcast, 20 year veteran of FEMA that worked on the programs of that bring about depopulation, global agendas, et cetera, things like that, said that in the vaccine they will be using hydrogel technology that is going to fuse in your DNA a microchip so that 5G can control you. Your every walk, every move, you'll become. What is it, a transhuman? Anyway, let's look at what Robert Kennedy has to say. Robert F. Kennedy Jr. has for years been at the forefront of the movement to bring public awareness to this issue. His organization, Children's Health Defense, and the premier advocate for awareness and justice for vaccine injured children. Robert Kennedy recently commented on Bill Gates' statements on the notion of vaccination of billions of people for coronavirus, of which the first group, the guinea pigs, would certainly be from developing nations. In fact, two French doctors recently explained on live TV why Africans would make the best test subjects for a vaccine. The controversy over a coronavirus vaccine is growing rapidly, and even U.S. Attorney General Barr expressed concerns of the idea of developing digital COVID-19 certificates of immunity to allow people to travel or work. Excuse me? Digital COVID-19 certificates? Which part's going to be the mark? Something is probably going to end up being a mark because you can't go into this new world order without this, not without something being very close to something like that. I don't say that it is, but it's very scary looking. All right, so here's what Robert Kennedy has to say here. Vaccines for Bill Gates are strategic philanthropy that feed his many vaccine-related businesses, including Microsoft's ambition to control a global vaccine ID enterprise and give him dictatorial control over global health policy, the spear tip of corporate neo-imperialism. Gates' obsession with vaccines seems to be fueled by a messianic conviction that he is ordained to save the world with technology and a godlike willingness to experiment with the lives of lesser humans. Promising to eradicate polio with 1.2 billion gates to control of India's National Advis Advisory Board and mandated 50 polio vaccines up from five to every child before the age of five. India doctors blame the Gates campaign for the devastating vaccine strain of polio epidemic that paralyzed 496,000 children between the year 2000 and 2017. I mean, guys, you think about this. Bill Gates is bringing in this new vaccine to help keep kids from being crippled by polio and cripples a half million. How lovely. And these are supposedly vaccines that were well tested. Of course, they were tested on some poor African population probably before they took it to India. But nonetheless, we're going to allow Bill Gates to stick another vaccine in us and sadly enough, people supposed to, supposedly in the intel community and those in the ministry are telling you, don't worry about it. Jesus will protect us if we get the vaccine. I would probably agree with that if you were held down and forced against your will. I do believe that he will make an intercession in a case like that. But I don't think in this particular type of scenario that's being perpetrated out there. It reminds me too much of the clergy response team. They go right along with the globalist agenda. And that's what bothers me. When I see the churches today going along with the globalist agenda, and they're not telling the people the truth. 
They're calming you down exactly what they were so told they were to do. Calm the people down. Make sure everything's okay so we can bring the little cows in and get them all inoculated before we take them to the slaughter. That's what I see coming. That's what they're doing. And that's the real shame. Let's turn our attention to a couple other stories here real quick in closing. New York City prisoners released early due to COVID-19 concerns were, re uh, were re-arrested, police say. Yep, it's turned into a revolving door. They let out 2,500 prisoners from, of all places, Rikers Island. And I got a good friend of mine here in Florida, and he has told me, when I told him about them releasing 2,500 prisoners from Rikers Island, him being a former uh, New York City cop, retired, he's like, what? They did what? They released them from where? He said, Steve, some of the worst criminals we have are on Rikers Island. And they he said, well, guess what? They're all going back. Well, sure enough, says here NBC4 News that at least 250 of those who were released have been arrested 450 times thus far meaning some have been arrested more than once, almost twice in most cases. Jonathan Martinez, one of the prisoners released from Rikers, has already been arrested three times since March 16th, release as part of the Manhattan District Attorney's plan to reduce the jail population. According to NBC News, uh, at the time, Martinez was being held on six charges, ranging from petty larceny to forced touching. He had previously been convicted of strangulation in 2014 for an incident involving his girlfriend. Well, wow, nice. Now he's back on the street. Now he's been arrested three more times. Lovely. So since his release, Martinez has been arrested for allegedly stealing a cell phone from a passenger in a parked car using a box cutter, stealing of food and beverages from a gourmet garage, and throwing a rock through a clothing ju uh, jewelry boutique. Every incident resulted in Martinez being released back into the public. What has he got to do? Well, it seems like nowadays you can do just about anything you want and get away with it. You know, just like we saw in the video earlier, you can go loot Walmart. Ain't nobody going to press charges. Oh, my goodness. All right, in closing here, Kim Jong-un's sister threatens military action against South Korea, promises tragic scene at the liaison office. All right, case in point, what is it right here? Kim Jo Young, while her brother's been very sick from a surgery he didn't do so well in there, has kind of taken uh, the reins of her brother, and she is extremely upset with South Korea because they keep allowing these little balloons to fly over to North Korea that criticize the leadership of uh, North Korea to begin with. So she has threatened military action. Well, let your balloons fly in here and we'll blow your whole city up. And that sounds, sounds really nice, doesn't it? Very, very lovely. What do you expect? New World Order agenda. Got to bring everybody down anyway. So no different with North Korea. They got to make sure that they push the buttons for North Korea so they can bomb them into oblivion and also make sure they fall into lines with this... Uh, New World Order or One World Government Agenda. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Thank you for joining in with us tonight. 